हेलो फ्रेंड्स आवर टूडेज टॉपिक इज न्यूट्रिशन इन प्लांट्स इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न व्हाट इज न्यूट्रिशन मोड्स ऑफ न्यूट्रिशन दैट इज ऑटोट्रॉपिक मोड ऑफ न्यूट्रिशन एंड हेट्रोट्रॉपिक मोड ऑफ न्यूट्रिशन सिम्बायोटिक रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन टू ऑर्गेनिजम एंड हाउ द न्यूट्रिय रिप्लेनिश इन द सॉइल सो लेट अस सी न्यूट्रिशन इन न्यू प्लांट फूड कंटेन्स कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स प्रोटीन्स फैट्स विटामिन एंड मिनरल्स आर कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ फूड दिज कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ फूड आर नेसेसरी फॉर आवर बॉडी आर कॉल्ड एज न्यूट्रिय हेल्प फॉर द ग्रोथ एंड रेगुलेशन ऑफ आवर बॉडी प्लांट बॉडी एज वेल एज एनिमल बॉडी न्यूट्रिशन वॉट इज द न्यूट्रिशन Nutrition is the process of taking in food and converting it into energy and other vital nutrients required for life. On the basis of obtaining food, there are mainly two modes of nutrition: autotrophic mode of nutrition, heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Autotrophic mode of nutrition. Auto means self. Trops means nourishment, self nourishment. See this plant. This plant getting energy from sun, getting water and minerals from the soil, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So using this simple substances, plants make their own food. The mode of nutrition in which organisms make their own food from simple substances is called as autotrophic nutrition. Plant. make their own food so the plants are called as autotrophs heterotrophic nutrition heteros means others it means the organisms are depend upon other organisms to obtain their food this plant is a autotrophic plant it make its own food but these animals are herbivores are depend upon plant for obtaining their food these are the carnivores depend upon herbivores to obtain their food so this is a food chain but main source of food is a plant plant make their own food this food is directly or indirectly utilized by the animals so animals are known as a heterotrophs so heterotroph means the mode of nutrition in which organism do not make their own food they take ready made food prepared by plants is called as a heterotrophic nutrition so animals they do not make their own food so animals are called as a heterotrophs some non green plants do not make their food by photosynthesis so non green plants are also called as a heterotrophs photosynthesis food making process in plant is known as a photosynthesis process the process by which green plants turns carbon dioxide and water into food using energy from sunlight is known as a photosynthesis this process takes place inside the leaf of the plant they have special type of cells are called as a chlorophylls so before that what is cells this is a simple structure of cells they have a nucleus at the center they have membrane around their body and nucleus is located in the jelly like material is known as a cytoplasm so cell the bodies of living organism are made of tiny units called as a cell so cells are the fundamental unit of life cells can be seen only under microscope some organisms are made of only one cell are called as unicellular organisms some organisms are made of more than one cells are called multicellular organisms the cell is enclosed by outer boundary called cell membrane most cells have a distinct centrally located spherical structure called the nucleus the nucleus is surrounded by jelly like substance called as a cytoplasm so this is the cell photosynthesis simple substances required for making food these are 
कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड प्लांट्स गेट कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड फ्रॉम एटमोस्फेयर वाटर फ्रॉम सॉइल सनलाइट फ्रॉम एटमोस्फेयर एंड क्लोरोफिल इन साइड द लीव सो दीज आर दोर्सेस ऑफ सिंपल सब्सटेंसेस रिक्वायर्ड फॉर मेकिंग फूड लीव्स आर द फूड फैक्ट्रीज ऑफ प्लांट्स वाय लीव्स आर कॉल्ड एज अ फूड फैक्ट्रीज ऑफ प्लांट्स बिकॉज ऑल द फोटोसिंथिस प्रोसेस कंप्लीट इन साइड द लीव ऑफ द प्लांट the synthesis of food in plants occur in leaves therefore all the raw materials must reach there so leaves are the site of photosynthesis water and minerals present in the soil are absorbed by roots and transported to the leaves carbon dioxide from air is taken in through the tiny pores present on the surface of the leaves these pores are surrounded by guard cells and such pores are called stomata this is the structure of stomata present on the leaf these are the two type of stomata when stomata is open and when stomata is closed during sunlight stomata is open and during night stomata is closed water and minerals transported to the leaves by vessels throughout the roots stems the branches and the leaves they form continuous path for nutrients to reach the leaf this is the path of water and minerals transported to the site of photosynthesis that is the leaves firstly water and minerals absorbed by roots transported to the stem from stem to the branches and finally from branches to the leaves of the plant these nutrients are transported through the vessels this is the structure of chlorophyll present in the leaf this is the transverse section of leaf when we observe it under the compound microscope we can observe this chlorophylls at the lower side these are the stomata small pores are present on the leaf so the leaves have a green pigment called as a chlorophyll chlorophylls capture sun energy from sunlight this energy is used to synthesize food from carbon dioxide and water finally carbon dioxide and water get converted into the food inside the leaf of the plant the process of photosynthesis occurs only in sunlight so this process is called as a photosynthesis process photo means light presence of light this process required sunlight for the photosynthesis this is the chemical equation this is the word equation written in the word carbon dioxide and water combine and convert into the carbohydrates in this process oxygen release so during the photosynthesis process carbon dioxide utilize for the production of food and oxygen gas release this is the chemical equation written by using their molecular formula carbon dioxide its molecular formula is co2 water its molecular formula is h2o food prepared in this process carbohydrate c6h12o6 is a simple form of carbohydrate it is known as a glucose and o2 is the oxygen released in this process during photosynthesis oxygen is released and carbohydrates ultimately get converted into the starch these are the different colored leaves of the plants photosynthesis is possible in these leaves they have chlorophylls yes they have chlorophyll and photosynthesis is possible in these leaves also because they have chlorophyll but they are masked by different color pigments like red color brown color and other color pigments mask the green color so these leaves also synthesize the food by photosynthesis process algae is a one example it is a green in color example of algae 
is a spirogyra generally found in the fresh water can algae prepare their food by photosynthesis yes they can prepare their food by photosynthesis because they have a chlorophyll pigment and with the help of photosynthesis process they make their own food so algae are autotrophs sun sun is the ultimate source of energy for all living organisms in the absence of photosynthesis there would be no food the survival of organisms directly or indirectly depend upon food made by the plants beside oxygen is produced in photosynthesis essential for the survival of all living organism in the respiration process so in the absence of photosynthesis life would be impossible on the earth so this is the photosynthesis process it is very important for all type of living organism heterotrophic nutrition hetero means other depend upon another organism to obtain their food the mode of nutrition in which organism do not make their own food they take in ready made food prepared by plant is called as a heterotrophic nutrition animals are depend upon another organism to obtain their food so animals are called as a heterotrophs heterotrophs are classified into two types on the basis of obtaining food parasite and saprotrophs heterotrophs this type of organisms cannot synthesize their food humans and animals some plants depend on the food produced by other plants they use heterotrophic mode of nutrition for example heterotrophic plant cascuta amarbel cascuta this is the plant grow on the another plant this cascuta do not have chlorophyll so cascuta plant do not synthesize food by photosynthesis process they takes ready made food from plants on which it is climbing the plant on which it climbs is called as a host so this is the host plant on which the cascuta plant climbing and growing obtaining food from the host plant they take valuable nutrients from host plant it is called as a parasite another example insectivorous plants insect eating plant this is the example of parasite pitcher plant is insectivorous plant this plant trap insect and digest them the pitcher like structure is a modified part of leaf the apex of leaf form a lid which can open and close the mouth of pitcher inside the pitcher there are hair which are directed downwards when an insect lands in the pitcher the lid closes and trapped insect get entangled into the hair the insect is digested by the digestive juice secreted in the pitcher such insect eating plants are called as the insectivorous plant this type of the plants are specially grown in that land where the nitrogen level is very lack so they do not prepare the proteins saprotrophs organisms take in nutrients in solution form from dead and decaying matter is called as a saprotrophic mode of nutrition the plants which use saprotrophic mode of nutrition are called saprotrophs examples are mushroom and fungi this is the mucor is the one example of fungi fungus also grow on pickles leather clothes and other articles that are left in hot and humid weather for long time mucor has some horizontal hyphae and some vertical hyphae at the tip of the vertical hyphae there are rounded structures are known as a sporangium inside the sporangium number of spores are present when sporangium burst all these spores release and fall on the land or any type of organic material and in 
humid condition in favorable condition they start to grow independently symbiotic relationship some organism live together and share shelter and nutrients is called symbiotic relationship for example fungi live in the root of the trees trees provides nutrients to the fungus and in return receives help from it to take up water and nutrients from the soil this association is very important for the trees fungus get shelter and food from the trees and fungus provide water and nutrients from the soil to the trees life chains this is another example of symbiotic relationship between algae and fungus live together the fungus provide shelter water and minerals to the algae and in return the algae provides food which is prepared by photosynthesis how nutrients are replenished in the soil plants absorb minerals from the soil so their amount in the soil keep on decreasing fertilizers and manures contain nutrients such as nitrogen potassium and phosphorus etc these nutrients need to be added from time to time to enrich the soil therefore plants can grow healthy if we fulfill the nutrients usually crop require a lot of nitrogen to make proteins after harvesting nitrogen level decreases in the soil nitrogen is present in air but plants cannot use it plants need nitrogen in soluble form rhizobium is present on the root of leguminous plant for example gram peas moong beans etc these plants are called as a leguminous plant because on their roots there are some small rounded structures are formed and inside these rounded structures rhizobium is present and it help for the fixation of nitrogen rhizobium bacteria can take nitrogen from atmosphere and convert it into the soluble form but rhizobium cannot make its own food so it lives with root of leguminous plant with symbiotic relationship so rhizobium bacteria is a useful bacteria help for replenish nitrogen in the soil rhizobium provides nitrogen to roots and root provides foods and shelter for the, the rhizobium most of the pulses are obtained from the leguminous plant